of frost there through some sheltered glens across Scotland. But generally, it's another fine day with plenty of spring sunshine on Thursday. Again, we'll have that east-west contrast with that easterly wind keeping things fresh on the easternmost coast. Maybe some heart around the coasts of northeast Scotland, but western Scotland seeing sunshine. Not quite as warm here, but still 16 or so. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit off. Well, you are. You, my, you, you, no. <laughs> my political ambitions are those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes <laughs> now. Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock. It's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. <laughs> We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. We've got a brand new lineup every Saturday night on GB News. From 6 p.m., I'll give you my unique take on the world today. Then at 7, it's me, Calvin Robinson, with my common sense crusade. New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Five times the opinion. Join us every Saturday from 8 p.m. as we debate the week's stories. With us four, plus a special guest. And at 9, of course, it's Mark Dolan tonight. Brand new Saturday nights on GB News, Britain's news channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten tonight. Another dramatic SNP arrest as its treasurer, Colin Beattie, was questioned by police today over the party's finances. Now, unsurprisingly, humiliated whom's useless and the dying separatist cause have become a laughing stock in Holyrood. First Minister is, of course, not without its challenges, it's fair to say, but not to withstanding that. So I'll explain why the fall of scheming Sturgeon may well have saved the United Kingdom in my digest next. Then my superstar panel weigh in. Tonight, I'm joined by Amanda Patel, Matt Letizia and Rebecca Reed. Also coming up, Superwoman Suella prepares to declare a national emergency as the number of channel migrants invading our shores this year passes 5,000. So why is Welsh Labour encouraging more boats by offering a £1,600 monthly allowance to young asylum seekers. Nigel Farage gives his unmissable take live. Elsewhere tonight is King Charles's decision to include a photo with Harry and Meghan in the official coronation programme. His latest olive branch to the troublesome duo. And as William, is William's silent treatment actually the better strategy? Well, esteemed royal biographer Tom Bauer, he's going to analyse the King's Sussex soft spot in Uncounseled. Also on the way, with ex-culture secretary Nadine Dorries slamming Philip Schofield for rude behaviour like this, 
And Emmerdale twisted teacher Maya, that's actress Louisa Klein, will be here talking about. <laughs> guys, we're going to have to jump in there and ending. stop you, I'm afraid, because we're a bit tight for time at this end. So thank you, oh, Ruth, and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Say, thank you very worry. much. Thank you. So, should this morning replace the scandal ridden presenter with Alison Hammond, TV Firebrand? Kim Woodburn, she's had her own on air clash with Scope, is going to take on Amy Anzell in the clash. As its members revolt for allowing men to join local branches, is the Women's Institute wrong to welcome trans women into the organisation? Well, our Tory culture warrior, the former Education Secretary Angela Jenkins, is going to weigh in soon. Plus, with a plus size influencer demanding free seats for fat flyers. People ask me if I purchase to seats when flying. They say it's not fair to the person who has to sit next to me if I do. When I tell them I do, they say I'm selfish for taking a seat from another. So, where do you stand on this one? We're going to tuck into that in the media buzz. As ever, first look at tomorrow's newspaper front page is too hot off the press. Uh, and a new Greatest British Union jackass will be revealed. This is Dan Wilson tonight. Let's go. You're watching GB News, Britain's news channel. Uh, this is a real crisis now for the SNP. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon must be suspended, in my opinion, as this investigation drags on. Uh, I'll tell you why in just a moment. First, though, the headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Dan, thank you very much and good evening. This is the latest from the GB newsroom. The SNP treasurer has been released without charge pending further investigation after he was arrested by police investigating the party's finances. Colin Beatty is the second person to have been questioned by detectives who are trying to establish how more than £600,000 in donations set aside for an independence referendum had been used. Earlier this month, the Scottish National Party's former chief executive and husband of former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, Peter Murrell, was questioned for more than 11 hours and also released without charge. When questioned in Holyrood today, SNP leader Hamza Youssef hit back at the Conservatives. It is uh, brave, some may use another word for it, when it comes to talking about prior, uh, propriety. Your Prime Minister, your Deputy Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister are all under investigation by the Standards Commission. So yes, so yes, while, while we face challenges, while we absolutely face challenges, I'd rather be standing here with the opportunity to deliver for the people of Scotland rather than languishing in the opposition like Megan Gallagher and the Scottish Tories. While the Scottish First Minister also set out his vision for the country in his first major policy statement since taking office, Mr Yusuf said the party will focus on equality, opportunity and community. He also announced a delay in the deposit return scheme for drinks, cans and bottles, as well as a six-month trial to remove peak time fares from ScotRail trains. The Home Secretary is set to declare the small boat crisis a national emergency. The move comes in response to a High Court challenge tomorrow aimed at halting government plans to house asylum seekers on an old RAF base in Essex. Braintree Council will attempt to secure an injunction preventing the transfer of 1,700 migrants to the Weathersfield Air Base. The declaration of a national emergency would give the Home Office powers to ignore local authority objections if the plans relate to Crown-owned property. While this all comes as the latest figures show, more than 5,000 people have crossed the English Channel so far this year. Charities and campaigners are warning new rules for energy suppliers don't go far enough. Firms across England, Scotland and Wales have agreed to a new voluntary code of practice to help protect vulnerable people. Under the new rules, suppliers must make at least 10 attempts to contact a customer and carry out a welfare visit before a prepayment meter can be installed. The End Fuel Poverty Coalition says the plans fail to deal with energy debt relief for those most in need. TV online, DAB Plus Radio and on TuneIn, this is GB News. Now it's back to Dan Whitten tonight.
The police investigation into the SNP and its missing £600,000 took another dramatic turn today. In the early hours of the morning, the crisis-ridden party's treasurer, Colin Beatty, was arrested as part of Operation Branch Form. Police Scotland has said in the past hour that Beatty has been released without charge but pending further investigation. But this latest political bombshell, which should be leading every news bulletin in the country today after months of the MSM choosing to ignore the growing SNP crisis, it comes just two weeks after the arrest of the party's ex-chief executive Peter Murrell, the husband of former leader Nicola Sturgeon. Cops, as you'll probably remember, spent two days at the fallen power couple's home, even erecting a tent, showing the likely scale of the investigation and later seizing a motorhome from Sturgeon's mother-in-law's house. Given draconian uh, Scottish contempt of court laws, there's much that cannot be said at this point. And I must stress, allegations of illegality have been denied by all parties involved. The investigation is clearly ongoing and no charges have been brought against anyone while Sturgeon has insisted that she's happy to assist the police in their investigations. But dramatic circumstances have finally woken the dormant Scottish media up to a bonfire of SNP scandals that have been hiding in plain sight for a number of years. Immediate among them, that the large political organisation that is the SNP has jaw-droppingly been without any auditors since last year. Not to mention this leaked video of Sturgeon, which was released by the Sunday Mail at the weekend, great work by them, showing the iron grip she had over the party and how she could be quite threatening about her senior officials, even asking simple questions. Be very careful, uh, all of us, about suggestions that there are problems with the party's finances because we depend on donors to donate. If there are leaks, as with everything else, it, that gets more difficult to do. So everybody has to be very clear a, a, about that. Now, last night, her former protégé turned arch nemesis, the ex-SNP leader Alex Salmond, revealed he had warned Sturgeon about her centralisation of power. Look at this. I said to Nicola and Peter at the time that uh, it couldn't work, that, you know, having the party leader and the chief executive married to each other. It wouldn't work in any business organisation. And, uh, you know, it's all right when times are good, but at some point, you know, there, there was going to come to grief. And, of course, it probably took longer than I expected, but it's certainly coming to grief in a spectacular so, way. So you're saying you personally warned the yes, former sir. first minister yeah. about you can't be married to the to the yes. chair of this organisation. Uh, absolutely, mm. and, and I have to say neither Nicola or Peter took the advice very well. <laughs> In fact, they took it rather badly. It was maybe the earliest reason for the breakdown of our relationship. Now look, all of this makes the farce of an SNP leadership election more ridiculous given a Sturgeon fanatic, the incompetent continuity candidate Humza Useless, has now been put in charge of a failing nation destroyed over many years by Sturgeon's separatism pipe dream. Useless was always a Sturgeon lapdog. Look at this. Uh, it's a clip uh, showing the ex-first minister just shushing her then health minister away as if he's a little boy. But Useless looks broken and humiliated now especially given he proudly declared himself the Sturgeon Unity candidate to win the election. Today, he was forced to deny his party was a criminal enterprise and came out with this classic line. Surprised that he's been arrested? Uh, well, yes, of course I'm surprised. One of my colleagues uh, has been uh, arrested, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a very serious matter indeed. Yes, it is. He's facing increasingly uncomfortable questioning long overdue from the Scottish media about whether Sturgeon should be suspended pending the outcome of the investigation, uh, like this from Colin Mackay of STV News. party has misled people about the state of its membership. You've lost your auditors. There's a police inquiry into your finances. Would you have expected to know all of that as party leader? Well, again, I think we could have done more around transparency. 
reality. There's no getting away from that. The membership number is a great example. We should have been far more upfront and transparent around the membership number. That was a debacle, an own goal. But as leader, you'd expect to know about all of that? Uh, you would expect to know, I would have imagined, uh, yes, about most of it. So Nicola Sturgeon should have known about all of that then? Well, again, that's for Nicola to answer what she knew and did not know whether it's about... But you would have numbers. expected to know that as party leader now. You would have expected her to know that before. Again, I, ex I know what my expectations are. My expectations of party leaders are to know about issues around membership numbers, around the party's finances. I can't speak for what Nicola knew. That At Holyrood today... Eustace was laughed at as he tried to underplay the position he now finds himself. First Minister is, of course, not without its challenges, it's fair to say, but not to withstanding that. Perhaps the sorry state of the SNP was summed up best by the Scottish Tories deputy leader, Megan Gallagher. The SNP is in total meltdown. Hamza Yusuf is so indebted to his former mentors that he will not do the right thing and suspend them while the investigation is ongoing. It is past time that Hamza Yusuf tackled this scandal head on and proved to the Scottish public that he is his own man, instead of defending and deflecting from his predecessor's tarnished legacy. So all of this has got me thinking today. Has there ever been a fall from grace in British politics more brutal than what scheming Sturgeon is facing. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, Queen Nick deserves to be shunned by Scots. She treated the First Minister job like a personal fiefdom, acting like a dodgy dictator, fueling nationalist hatred and turning Scots against the English, all while driving her country into the ground. But as I always knew and used to tell you regularly, her act was a mirage based on personal ambition. In the end, the fall of Sturgeon may well have saved the United Kingdom. But to respond now, my superstar panel. <laughs> Top Daily Mail columnist Amanda Patel, ex-England footballer Matt Letizia, and the author and broadcaster Rebecca Reid. I mean, Amanda Patel, she's gone from controlling that party with an iron grip, as we saw in that leaked video, to being so politically toxic that Eustace is surely going to have to suspend while this investigation is ongoing. OK, can I first of all preface all my remarks with people may have been um, questioned but not charged and released upon further investigation. Yes. OK, so we've got yes. that all straight. And they deny all And they deny the all the charges. But, Dan, can it really only be the 15th of um, February when Nicola Sturgeon got up and said, you know, you told me I can't sit, call her that overstuffed little haggis anymore, but I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> OK, go on. So I'll she got up, and remember that thing, she was tear-stained, right? She had waterproof mascara on going, and she said that, that famous quote, she said, with my head and my heart, I know that now is the right time to stand down because I'm exhausted by this personal persecution mm -hmm. and the way that social media's come after me, and I can't stand it anymore, but I've loved the job I've done. Yeah, like... Uh, six weeks later, her husband's collared uh, with all the prefaces I put on beforehand, you know. And, and Jesus, Dan, tell me if it is not true that that scene when they went to her house, their house, her and her husband's house, it was like a scene from Line of Duty. Mm -hmm. You know, they had all these white canopies yeah. everywhere, like they were bringing out dead bodies, but they were obviously... I had to message someone and be like, has she been accused of something else? Because that look... Mm. That like... was just crazy. I mean, that... was she hasn't. No, 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 no. Let's just be okay. clear. No, no, she, she hasn't. She absolutely has. Has. Yeah. She absolutely look, has. I've put my preface on the top of my comments. Yeah. So we have basically, she goes, oh, head and heart, oh, weep, weep, weep. And then husband gets collared, then the treasurer gets collared, and... Um, she got out in the nick of time. You can't say that. <laughs> All you can say is that <laughs> maybe she felt that the pressures were too great for her, but it's just incredibly yeah. convenient. Yeah, but I don't forget that, that, that a few weeks before, just as her in that whole... interview with the BBC, she said, "No, I've got lots in the tank." I mean, Matt, yeah, but Donnie, the whole thing is she's she's basically. God, it's so hard to say this. <laughs> um, she is... Uh, uh, we all know a situation when you've got duds around you and you basically have to get out before you get dragged down with them. Yeah. And, and I think that she's just shown herself to be what she is, the most calculating and cold woman, but she cannot stand down because that would basically, you know, what's his name, the guy from the line of duty, Dunbar, if you walk out on the suspect, 
then it makes them look more suspicious. Well, that, of course. Is that okay to say that? Well, look, I, so I, you, I, so you said I, it. Yeah, oh. I, will, I will just stress at this point, Sturgeon has made it absolutely clear that she has not been approached by the police, but she is happy to cooperate with the police if she is questioned, if they want to speak to her. And she knew nothing about it. The guy she's been sleeping with for her entire married life. I mean, she wouldn't be the first person not to know what her husband yeah, was doing. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's But very she true. wouldn't also be the first person who did know. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I, no, I'm not saying that. I did not in say theory, that. In theory. I did not say that, OK? You prefaced it. Uh, yeah, Matt, I prefaced it. Matt, listen here. I want to speak a little bit about the media here, both the Scottish media and the Westminster media, because even just a couple of weeks ago, right, when we knew about this investigation yep. going on, Sturgeon did this lap of honour. You know, she was on ITV's Lorraine being treated as this brilliant yeah. leader. Then Sly News' Beth Rigby sat down with her and treated her like an absolute departing hero. Yeah. Uh, the Heroine. media have been totally exposed here, haven't they? Um, I, I don't think it's the first time they've been totally exposed no. over the last few years, to be no. honest. But yes, they have again. Um, complicit in, in everything that's mm. gone on. But they loved uh, her because she was their years. COVID hero, wasn't she? She was the one who Indeed. wanted to lock down all on the same of the side. draconian stuff. Yeah, and because she's all on the same side. So if you're a woman, you're exempt from the rules that apply to any male politician. Mm. But I, I remember I, a heart and a head. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, a head and a heart. I mean, there, there, there's some incredible things that have gone on these these last uh, couple of weeks, and the scenes that we saw outside their house. Mm just wasn't a normal scene for something that may be a bit of a bit of fraud going on. I don't think you can say that. Did I? Can I not? No, I think you went too far. But it was the big, <laughs> the big white tent outside the I front of the house. I think you associate that tent with... One associates that tent with a different kind yeah. of drama, but the, which is but, 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 yes. but the point is, right, Sturgeon has been the elected First Minister. We saw whether you, whether you agreed with Boris Johnson, right, or not, we saw the absolute media hysteria over a piece of cake where the maximum penalty uh, was going to be a fixed penalty notice. Yeah. You know, nothing that's of any note. You know, it's like getting yeah. a speeding ticket. And the media, day in, day out, yeah. uh, were hounding him over this cake. Yeah. Uh, there's a missing £600,000 and Nicholas Sturgeon can go through entire interviews, entire press conferences without not one question asked being asked yeah, about it. And I know you've been on the media, Matt, for the past three years, and I think this is so significant. It is incredibly significant, and it, and it feels like they, they, they're only going to ask those questions once they literally have no option because everybody else in the country knows yes. about it. Absolutely. And they have to wait until that yep. tipping point yeah. where... It's got out on every yes. other bit of social media before they go, oh, hang on a minute, too many people know about this. And there's other this. people in the we same situation some questions. At, at the moment. We, and that's happened that a lot. Same conspiracy Is that design. true that she has been in a press conference since this broke and no journalist asked the question? Well, at her farewell, at her farewell press conference, it was the last question... But well, was point, that not invited press that to her point, at that She walked away from the podium. Now, the point that I'm making, it should have been the first question. But was it that was the not, obvious was first her, question. Yeah. You're quitting because there's a police investigation into the SNP finance. No, we don't, we don't, last, we, we, not, we don't know that. We don't know that the police investigation... We don't know when it started. I, I but no, we knew that, when she'd quit that, that it had been going we, because it's been going for two we, years. Lots of us have worked in journalism for a long time. We know that the main thing people want is traffic and attention. This is an interesting story. People click on it. That it, There is no great conspiracy in the media other than oh, well, getting eyes on your Matt, stories and on. getting lots of... <laughs> no, no, come on, Matt. There is no, no other. No, it Rebecca, is about Rebecca, traffic Rebecca, and attention. That's 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 she true. had the sisterhood behind I've, her. I've, that's not I've true. been and working in it for years. All they care about is who's at the top of the leaderboard for traffic. That's all anybody cares about in a newsroom. There is no meeting we go to. Uh, they say this I'm is sorry, party line. you'll be it doesn't completely happen. naive if you do not believe that the media in this country is ideologically driven. They what meeting supported is that? Do you get invited? They I don't. Des they, they, they loved her draconian there policies no during meeting. lockdown. And let me tell you, let me tell you, if this had been a Conservative politician, she would have been hammered on it and questioned about it every day. And I think the media have egg on their face, actually, for letting uh, the SNP leader not be questioned on this. I mean, it's just bizarre to me. But look, Rebecca Reed, Matt Letizia, Amanda Patel, my superstar panel are here all night. And just a quick legal note, the allegations surrounding the SNP's finances are denied by all parties involved. The police investigation is ongoing and no charges have been brought against anyone. Now, coming up, as the number of channel migrants invading our shores passes 5,000 this year, why is Welsh Labour planning to give young asylum seekers a £1,600 monthly 
allowance. Nigel Farage, he can't believe this, uh, and he's live on it soon. But first, with fresh criticism directed at Philip Schofield by ex-culture secretary Nadine Dorries for his abhorrent behaviour towards a co-host, is it time for the scandal hit This Morning presenter to be replaced by Alison Hammond? TV firebrand Kim Woodburn, she has her own issues with Philip, uh, is going to take on Amy Anzell on this next. But what do you think? Email me, Dan, at gbnews.uk. Uh, vote in our poll at GB News. The Clash with Kim Woodburn. Oh, my goodness, I cannot wait. Straight after the break. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock. It's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Join us every Saturday from 8pm as we debate the week's stories. Right, folks, that Ooh. was a spicy one, wasn't it? With us four, plus a special guest. Sometimes she has to stick her foot in it. Sometimes she has to say things as they are. Sometimes I think we should keep the refugees and send the pensioners to Rwanda. <laughs> then we'd be in a much better state. Well, Benjamin, yeah. that is that that The Saturday Five. Saturday nights from 8. Only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Nigel Farage and Tom Bauer both on the way, but first the clash. Conservative MP and former Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries has launched her new column in the Daily Mail by slamming ITV star Philip Schofield for his behaviour on This Morning. She wrote, on one occasion I witnessed what appeared to be somewhat intimidating behaviour. Holly Willoughby was away. And as her stand-in looked down at her script, obviously wanting to see who or what was coming up next, Philip glared at her and began to jab at her script with his finger. I don't know about her, but he scared me. 
Now, Darius has called for ITV to replace Philip with the increasingly popular Alison Hammond, who covered for the star while his paedophile brother was convicted of child sex offenders earlier this month. Uh, this is not the first scandal for Scope in recent months, let's be honest. It included the infamous Q-Gate saga. It took me probably a year, 18 months before. I was actually glad that I'd survived. Wow. Wow. Gosh. And even at 43% of your body. 43%. <laughs> And Emmerdale, Twisted Teacher Maya, that's actress Louisa Klein, will be here talking about... Guys, this we're going to have to jump in there and stop you, I'm afraid, because we're a bit tight for time at this end. So thank you, Ruth, and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Thank Don't you very worry. much. Thank you. So, as the former TV favourite sees a series of scandals sent his popularity crashing through the floor tonight, I'm asking, should this morning replace Philip Schofield with Alison Hammond? Email me, Dan, at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at GB News. I'll poll running there. But to debate this tonight, TV personality and queen of clean, Kim Woodburn, who has famously clashed with Philip on air, and former Apprentice candidate Amy Anzell. So... Kim Woodburn, look, let's be honest about this. You have your own issues with Philip, and I believe uh, he has recently banned you from supporting one of your friends on the set of Dancing on Ice. Absolutely. Uh, a friend of mine was on that, and um, I got a, a message from him saying, Kim, would you be my guest for the first night? And, you know, I said, of course I will. Well, anyway, I didn't hear a word, and the first night was coming up. So I, I got on to my friend and he said, well, funny enough, I haven't heard anything. He said, let me have another go. Anyway, having had another go, they didn't, Philip Schofield did not want me in the audience because, you know, they walk around and if I happened to be there, whether he was afraid, I'd insult him, I wouldn't have. It was my friend's night. Uh, there would have been nothing like that at all. But the point is, what power does he have? I am forbidden to come on a show. It's oh my appalling, goodness. this. Now, Kim, uh, on last night's show, I actually described Philip Schofield as the most loathsome man on TV. Alison Hammond is the nicest woman on TV. So why don't ITV actually back the good guy for once? Well, you see, now, I'm going to say something to you. There's something going on that's dirty among the higher echelon of that channel. Mm. There's something I can't, I can't, look, I'm not going to, I'm thinking I'm not going to say it, but Phil has a connection with the higher echelon, which protects him completely from being thrown off that darn show. He can do what he wants, he can say what he wants, he insults people, he insulted me, he's rude and nasty. Yeah. So, Nad so Kim, Nadine Dorry said his behaviour was intimidating in the studio towards... Oh. Uh, his co-host, did you feel intimidated by him at all? Did you see any of this behaviour? Not just me. He absolutely wagged his finger at me as you saw it. And I said, but you weren't in the house. You don't know what goes on. The big brother house. He was horrible. Whatever hold he's got over the higher echelon, the secret's being kept. We don't want him on television. We don't want the man. He's I, I, I mean, OK, Amy, Amy Anzal, look, I know you're going to defend Philip Schofield tonight. God knows why, but good on you for doing that. But can I just tell you, look, you've got three of the country's most respected women, all women who I know very well, uh, Kim Woodburn, Amanda Holden, Nadine Dorries, all saying they have witnessed appalling behaviour from Philip Schofield. I know people who have had their careers ruined uh, by this guy. Why should he keep his job? Well, look, I don't think he should be replaced. I think he deserves to keep his job because, well, for example, I know I've read so much about his brother obviously being convicted. And for a reason like that, I don't think he should be losing his job. I personally haven't had any interaction with him. For all I know, these could be just false accusations. You know, what is proven? I don't know. I wasn't there to witness it. All I know is a situation that's been reported in the news repeatedly, like his brother being convicted. And then he's standing by and saying, you know, I don't have a brother anymore. So I think that makes him look really good, actually. I don't think he should be replaced. I think he's doing a great job. Um, if Alison Hammond, someone like her, proves to be more popular amongst the but viewers over time, we, 
we'll see what happens. I mean, it's all about the ratings, as we know. Kim, would you, how would you respond you, to that? It appears to me you don't really watch the film, the show, do you? You don't watch it, do you? I have the lady. watched it, Kim. How often have I you have watched it? it? I, ha I work from home. I do watch it. How often do you watch it? I watch it several How times a week. Why does that matter? I personally haven't been. Are you saying that every day he does something to a man? So you don't respect that women, not just me, forget me, I don't care what you think about me, it's irrelevant. So women like Nadine Dorries and other lovely people who've said he intimidates them, upsets them, you don't believe them, yet you don't always watch the show. Just a few women that have had these interactions with him. Nothing has been proven. I haven't really read about this. They're not interactions. This, this damn thing, you these words you use. You mean his darn right rudeness and putting them down and jabbing his finger. That's not interaction. It's disgusting I behavior. That, uh, where, if I where, get in front of you to wagging my finger, would you call it interaction? Don't talk to tripe. I mean, Can you hear me? Yes, I heard you loud and clear. Not I, I haven't seen. Are you saying that every day on this morning he wags his finger at the women sitting across from him? I did not say that. Open your ears. You're obviously going deaf. At no time did no, I say he doesn't. I hear you loud and clear. My computer's working just fine. I don't care what you think because you talk rubbish. What about the Queen incident when he jumped the queue mm. by putting a press tag on? My, excuse me, oh, you, you're the type of person I love to have a go up because you're so thick, it's not even believable. Oh, Kim. Kim. Very well educated. I graduated cum laude from my university, which is one of the top universities of the world. I don't know what you're referring to. I'm sorry. I'm a very intelligent oh, woman. I'm sorry you feel that way. I thought you knew the history of Philip Schofield. But you don't know what I mean. I but do. Course, I, re I researched yeah. it. But but for but many Amy, hours. but Amy, this dates right back to a really good woman like Fern Britton, who who Philip uh, also yes. treated very yes. badly. Yes. So there's there's a long yes. track record of this. Fern Britton, as Rock we all know. How do we know if these accusations are they definitely true? Well, you can, Kim's, Kim had to deal with it herself. I mean, look, I worked at ITV Daytime for 10 years. You know, I know exactly how Philip Schofield acts behind the scenes. I'm not going to describe him as the most loathsome person in TV unless now, he is. was a much loved presenter. She was a lovely, lovely, homely woman. No one could see was a mum's figure. For nine years. For nine years, she was a presenter on this morning's show and she was much beloved and I'm not surprised. Mm. Right. No. Look, Philip has been there over 20 years. Obviously, I haven't finished, Gobby. Okay, finish she your point. Got millions of followers on Twitter and Instagram. Millions of followers. How many okay. do you have, Kim? Well, she's popular. She's Kim, popular. Kim, what's your final word, Kim? What's your final oh, word? Look, you know what? I don't like you. Do you know why? Because you're stupid. Do you think the fact of how many followers you have means how wonderful you are? Don't talk to no, me. No, I didn't say that. Kim, you should listen for a change. You should listen. I didn't listen. say that. Maybe you should you open your ears. You I can't. Can. It's so like popular he is. That's all. You okay. don't listen. Okay. You just well, look, talk. Well, look, I... I, I... I've been in America for 11 years, and this is the original big gob. <laughs> well, look, I love both yes. of your gobs. Yes. Thank yes, you very yes. much for having the debate. Uh, look, I will tell you that in a statement released by Schofield's lawyers after his brother's recent conviction, he said, my overwhelming concern is and always has been for the well-being of the victim and his family. I hope that their privacy will now be respected. If any crime had ever been confessed to me by my brother, I would have acted immediately to protect the victim and their family. These are despicable crimes and I welcome the guilty verdicts. As far as I'm concerned, I no longer have a brother. Thank you to Kim Woodburn and Amy Anzel there. Who are you with? Should this morning replace Philip Schofield with Alison Hammond? Tracy writes, this morning is much better when Alison and Dermot are on. Make Philip and Holly the stand-ins instead. Not sure they'd be up for that. From Stevie, can't stand the sight of Schofield anymore. Used to be a bit of a fan, but in recent times, though, he comes across as an arrogant and insincere man. I'm from Sean. Schofield has passed it now. Ever since Qgate, he has become holier than thou. Your verdict is now in. 76% of you with Nadine Dorries and uh, Kim Woodburn too, saying that this morning should replace Philip Schofield with Alison Hammond. 24% of you uh, want Phil to stay in the job.
Coming up, is the Women's Institute wrong to welcome trans women into the organization? Now, Tory culture warrior, the former education minister, Andrea Jenkin, weighs in soon. But next, with Suella Braverman to declare the small boats crisis a national emergency, is Welsh Labour opening the floodgates even more by offering a £1,600 hound out to young asylum seekers? Nigel Farage, he's alive on this straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. It's all about family. Being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. Crop failures, famine, war, uh, suffering on a scale uh, completely uh, unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said at the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late-night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you know Kate okay, Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. What the Farage time now, and despite damning new figures showing some 5,000 illegal migrants have already crossed the channel into Britain so far this year, even in cold weather, the Labour government in Wales now has a balmy new plan to lavish asylum seekers with £23,000 a year in benefits. That's as a reward, really, isn't it, for making it here? Mark Drakeford's woke government is pushing for migrants who arrive as unaccompanied children to each be given 1,600 monthly pocket money when they turn 18 as part of a universal basic income scheme while still having their deportation legal battles paid for by taxpayers. Three Welsh Labour ministers have written to Tory Justice Minister Lord Bellamy begging for migrants to be given the cash without it affecting their ability to claim legal aid, which is means tested. Now, Drakeford's boss in Westminster Keir Starmer is under pressure to distance himself from the plans, but he's yet to comment. So, 
Nigel Farage, I was I was watching you earlier and you couldn't even really believe that this harebrained scheme was not a hoax, but it's totally real, Nigel. So why does Welsh Labour want to incentivise illegal migration? I mean, I really did think it must be an April the 1st story. It couldn't possibly be true. And we are still in you know, early mid-April. Um, unbelievable. I mean, given that of a survey done last year, uh, released under FOI, 98% of migrants had dumped their ID, right? If you come in age 17 and aged 18 and get £1,600 a month benefit, I promise you there won't just be dinghies crossing to Dover, there'll be much bigger boats coming straight into Cardiff Bay with people with no documentation claiming they're 17 years and 11 months old and waiting to take the money. It's almost beyond comprehension. Uh, perhaps what it is showing us is how mad devolution is becoming. I mean, you know, in Scotland, you know, a double rapist turns up in court with a wig on, is sent to a woman's prison, and that brings down Sturgeon, thank goodness. Um, and Drakeford just appears to have gone completely and utterly mad in every regard. I, look, I have been predicting this disaster for the last three years. I've been calling for two years for a national emergency to be declared. Um, and for on the very same day we hear of this bonkers proposal, which, by the way, Keir Starmer will slap down. Believe you me, he will. Oh, he'll hesitate. He'll, you know, have a seat yeah. with the winds going. But, but he, he has to. Slap. He has to. Yeah. yeah, he has to. He has to. But at the same time, and think about this, Suella Braverman is declaring a national emergency. Now, I thought, hooray, at last, they've got it. They've woken up under emergency powers. We're going to send people straight back to French beaches with the Royal Marines. No, the national emergency means they can use a clause of the Local Government Act to completely override local democracy and to sequestrate former RAF bases, prison camps, barges, fill them up with young, undocumented males without even bothering to talk to the local councils. And this situation gets worse and worse and worse. We're about to get the really good weather. That'll come. That settled weather will come in May, June, July. And we are going to be completely and utterly overwhelmed. And Rishi Sunak's stop the boats. I mean, don't make me laugh. Stop the boats. And did you see last Friday? He was backtracking already. Oh, Why? I know, yeah. Why? A major court case, and you won't have read this anywhere, mm. a major court case starts in the High Court on Monday of next week. And believe you me, GB News' is Mark White is all over this. And even if, you know, it depends what happens there, mm. but then it could go to the Supreme Court. And then, of course, to our friends in Strasbourg at the European Court of Human Rights. And... I really believe, I really believe that none of this can be solved until we leave a completely outdated court run by people who are jurists. It's a bizarre European concept. They're not even legally trained in many cases. We should not be part of that. Brexit would never have gone through without the promise of controlling our borders. We cannot control our borders staying part of this court. Uh, and I tell you what, you, you know, people may say, oh, Rishi's bringing stability. You know, if you want to do maths until you're 28, I suppose, that's great. But, <laughs> but you know, but, but, you know <laughs> isn't it funny, isn't it? I, mean, you know, I don't want point, to. I mean, head boy at Winchester, Oxford and Stanford thinks yeah. we should all do maths. I mean, God help us. But, yeah. but the truth of it is, this is still the issue that will cost the Conservatives the next election. And unless they can muster the courage to take on this question, to take on the ECHR as a logical extension of what Brexit Britain should do, they will lose the election because public anger is real. And, Dan, the great thing is, it doesn't matter what the Times say, you know, or the commentariat say, the fact is a settled, large majority of the country are with you and me. 
situation. Absolutely. And the anger is going up and up and up, especially as these migrant hotels come closer to many more communities. But look, Nigel, I wanted to move on to a big issue across the Atlantic, uh, which has really tapped into something we've been talking about for quite a long time here. And it's the maker of Budweiser beer now trying to make amends for this own <coughs> goal uh, by hiring Dylan Mulvaney, you know, the trans influencer. So they've released a new all-American, all-masculine TV commercial. So I just want to show you a reminder of Dylan Mulvaney's Bud Light commercial that saw £5 billion wiped off the value of its parent company and now this new Budweiser ad which is trying to reverse some of the damage. Hi. Impressive carrying skills, right? I got some Bud Lights for us. So, I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. Let me tell you a story about a beer rooted in the heart of America, found in a community where a handshake is a sure contract, brewed for those who found opportunity in challenge. This is a story bigger than beer. This is the story of the American spirit. I mean, Nigel, the issue might be for Budweiser, the horse has already bolted. <laughs> well, it's good to see a stallion, I have to say. It's good to see later in the advert, blokes together, positive images of the national flag, pictures of Manhattan. Um, hooray! Um, does this mean we can be blokes again and have a beer with each other without being accused of being ghastly and vile? Um, you know, I was, the Grand, I was at the Grand National on Saturday, having a beer, watching horses. I thoroughly approve of this new Budweiser advert. And, you know, in life, it's never too late to make amends. This new advert effectively is an apology for what they've done before. And you know something? Woke capitalism, ESG investing, none of it is working. You know, the people winning on the stock markets of the last year were in, guess what, oil. Tobacco, coal, <laughs> these are the stocks that did really well last year. But I, I love it all. So, look, it, you know, let's be fair to Budweiser. Yeah. You know, they've obviously got some marketing department full of cretins. They've realised their mistake. They've corrected it. And I, do you know something with that and what's happened in Scotland and elsewhere? I actually think what we're seeing is the pendulum can swing back mm -hmm. very quickly. And I think on this whole trans lunacy, and by the way, mm. you know, when I led UKIP, I had trans people who were candidates. Mm. I won as a deputy mayor. I won as an MEP. I've got no problem with people genuinely who feel they're born, you know, into the wrong body. And I think we should all be tolerant of that. Um, what we shouldn't be doing is actively promoting it as a sort of everyday choice and lifestyle that hundreds of us take up. And, and to tell children at school, this is a really, really... In fact, actually, it's preferable to be trans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's been the big error. So, actually, I'm very encouraged by this, very encouraged by the advert. Budweiser is not my favourite choice of beer, I have to say. I'm more of an English real ale man. But well done them for recognising yeah. their marketing department got it wrong. Yeah. Common sense. And doing that 180, that very quick 180. Uh, Nigel Farage, brilliant to speak. And of course, Nigel back at 7 p.m. tomorrow night here on GB News. But coming up with Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick admitting that migrants will continue to be housed in hotels long term, costing us millions a day, as Nigel just implied. Is Fishy Rishi now starting to row back on the small boats? That's the big debate with my superstar panel shortly. Also, as members of one of the UK's largest voluntary organisations, the Women's Institute say they've been, quote, forced to accept men. Is the organisation wrong to admit trans women? Uh, this is a big debate of the day. So our Tory culture warrior, the former Education Minister, Andrea Jenkins, she's going to be live on this straight after the break.
Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go, and it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, three till six. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. Three till six p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Hello, I'm Calvin Robinson. Do not miss my Common Sense Crusade Saturdays at 7pm. Join me for some in-depth discussions on faith. Is that not the start of the slippery slope? It's very much so. And the big moral questions of the day. <laughs> I'm baffled. You've got some nerve. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Now, the Women's Institute have courted controversy this week for a policy that allows transgender members to join the historically female-only organisation with members never having been consulted on the change. A campaigning group known as the Women's Institute Declaration has launched a petition after arguing the policy puts women's institutes in an untenable position as they cannot campaign for women's only issues with biological men included in their membership. Now, the WI themselves insist that the policy builds on our ambitions and enriches the community while former Tory party leader Lord Haig told Times Radio today that anyone with concern should, I quote, get used to it and get over trans people being part of the Women's Institute. Well, maybe my next guest might need a bit more convincing, uh, Lord Haig, the Tory culture warrior, the former education minister, Andrea Jenkins. So, Andrea, look, uh, where do you stand on this? Because it's a complicated one, yeah. isn't it? Uh, well, I don't know if it's complicated, Dan, but... Remember the calendar girls? That was from mm. Yorkshire. What would that look nowadays? You know, you'd need strategically placed pineapples, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> but I, I, I just think that I've got nothing against women's groups or gentlemen's clubs, and I think, you know, just live and let be. And there's nothing wrong with people feeling safe in their spaces, all women together. Mm. And I don't think that people should um, have their views Im imposed down on them. It should be down to individual members. But so would that mean, though, that there would be a ban on trans people or does it depend on what stage of the process you're at? For example, if you've had surgery? Yes. I, I, I mean, personally, I think if you've had surgery, then then that's a, you know, a, a different ball game, so to speak, excuse the pun. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think it should be down to individual members and groups yeah. to decide, really. They, they know their membership. They know, I mean, some of these groups are very tiny, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. No, indeed they are. 
Now, look, this Sunday, uh, Mark yeah. now the glorious St George's Day, <laughs> we don't really support it enough, mm. do we? But I hear in your constituency, uh, it's a really big deal. God, it's amazing, Dan. We have like 10,000 people lying in the streets, St George on horseback, um, reenactments, and it's so patriotic, it's wonderful. Please come along. Do you, yeah. I'd love to actually. Do, do you think there's a bit of an issue here? Because, of course, with the Irish, St. Patrick's Day is totally embraced by the media. So is Burns Night, actually, in Scotland, Completely. which is even celebrated uh, brilliantly yes. in, in London now. But it feels like there's still that Emily Thornbury oh my stench gosh. of cultural cringe. Like, why don't we wrap ourselves in the St George's flag more? Why aren't we more proud of being English? I think it comes back down to the lefty lovies who, mm. the Remainer type who, uh, you know, they're always proud to be European, um, yet they call us little Englanders. You know, they, yeah. they have such disdain and snobbery for yeah. that. And like exactly. you said... They'll, they'll happily fly the EU flag, yes. won't they? Still won't flag the St George's flag. Absolutely. Cross. Nice, they shame. And then we'll look, well, I'm going to... Try and get down to your part. That'd be amazing, Dan. Now, coming up, as the SNP's treasurer, Colin Beattie, is arrested and questioned by police over the party's finances, has Sturgeon's poodle successor, Humza, useless, and the dying separatist cause become a laughing stock. I'll investigate with some of the finest minds in Scottish politics shortly. But next, as Downing Street says there are no quick fixes or silver bullets for solving the channel migrant crisis, is Fishy Rishi beginning to row back on the small boats. That's the big debate with my superstar panel next. Plus, we're going to have the first newspaper front pages for you, hot off the press. Don't go anywhere. We're back in just two minutes' time. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are. We don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no. no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. Crop failures, famine, war, <laughs> suffering on a scale completely <laughs> unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said at the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News, we're starting the conversation and having the debate that the establishment won't have. No one will be cancelled. Join me at 4pm every Saturday and Sunday. We'll be discussing all the big topics of the weekend. Oh, get cracking! Uh, yeah. <laughs> always honest, always fun. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. It's 10pm. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight as SNP Treasurer Colin Beattie becomes the latest arrest in the bombshell police investigation into the party's finances. Are the Scottish separatists on the brink of collapse? Political and social commentator James Melville, General Secretary of the Alba Party, Christopher McElhinney, and Scottish Daily Mail's political editor Michael Blackley offer their unmissable insight very shortly. With Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick admitting that migrants will continue to be housed in hotels long term, costing us millions a day. And number 10 saying there are no quick fixes for solving the crisis. Is Rishi Sunak breaking his pledge to the British people to stop the boats? So that's the big debate with my superstar panel next. And tonight I'm joined by Amanda Platel, Matt Letizier and Rebecca Reed. Also coming up. 
as the king includes a photo with Harry and Meghan in the official coronation souvenir program, should Charles still be pandering to the troublesome pair? Esteemed royal biographer Tom Bauer returns live to the studio to explain why the monarch is being played for a fool that's uncancelled. An Orwellian nightmare uh, will descend on Britain this Sunday as the government universally sends out this test alert. So should alarm bells be ringing at this orchestrated scheme by the nanny state? We speak freely out about that in the media buzz. Also with a plus size influencer demanding free seats for fat flyers. People ask me if I purchase to seats when flying. They say it's not fair to the person who has to sit next to me if I do. When I tell them I do, they say I'm selfish for taking a seat from another. Oh, what do you think of that? Or are we just too accepting of this sort of obesity? Uh, you can expect a fiery discussion on that one, I'm sure. And finally, after charging the hallowed crucible theatre, are we snooker loopy for tolerating Just Stop Oil? That and more will be thrashed out when I crown tonight's Greatest Britain. And Union Jackass will have the first newspaper front pages for you in mere moments too hot off the press. First, though, the headlines with Tatiana Sanchez. Dan, thank you and good evening. This is the latest from the GB newsroom. The SNP treasurer has been released without charge pending further investigation after he was arrested by police investigating the party's finances. Colin Beattie is the second person to have been questioned by detectives who are trying to establish how more than £600,000 in donations set aside for an independence referendum had been used. Earlier this month, the Scottish National Party's former chief executive and husband of former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, Peter Murrell, was questioned for more than 11 hours and also released without charge. When questioned in Holyrood today, SNP leader Hamza Youssef hit back at the Conservatives. It is uh, brave, some may use another word for it, when it comes to talking about prior, uh, propriety. Your Prime Minister, your Deputy Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister are all under investigation by the Standards Commission. So yes, so yes, while, while we face challenges, while we absolutely face challenges, I'd rather be standing here with the opportunity to deliver for the people of Scotland rather than languishing in the opposition like Megan Gallagher and the Scottish Tories. The Scottish First Minister also set out his vision for the country in his first major policy statement since taking office. Mr Youssef said the party will focus on equality, opportunity and community. He also announced a delay in the deposit return scheme for drinks, cans and bottles, as well as a six-month trial to remove peak time fares from ScotRail trains. The Home Secretary is set to declare the small boat crisis a national emergency. The move comes in response to a High Court challenge tomorrow aimed at halting government plans to house asylum seekers on an old RAF base in Essex. Braintree Council will attempt to secure an injunction preventing the transfer of 1,700 migrants to the Wethersfield Air Base. The declaration of a national emergency would give the Home Office powers to ignore local authority objections if the plans relate to Crown-owned property. This all comes as the latest figures show more than 5,000 people have crossed the English Channel so far this year. Now, in a last-minute deal, US voting technology firm Dominion has settled a defamation case with Fox News just before the trial was due to begin. Opening arguments in the case had been due to begin this afternoon, but according to a lawyer for Dominion, they've reached a £633 million agreement. Dominion had originally sought a £1.3 billion settlement from Fox, claiming it spread false information about its voting machines during the 2020 presidential election. Well, the settlement allows Fox News to avoid having a number of its top executives, including CEO Rupert at Murdoch and well-known Tucker Carlson testify in open court. TV online, DAB Plus Radio and on TuneIn. You're with GB News. Now it's back to Dan.
Tomorrow's news site now in our media buzz. And let's kick off with a uh, very first look at the front pages, hot off the press. And uh, a couple of the papers have gone with the right story, which I'm very happy about. The Independent leading on comments from whom's are useless that he doesn't believe the SNP is criminal. Uh, meanwhile, the paper carries a beaming picture from, the, uh, from 2018 of the royal family, including Harry and Meghan, that's set to feature in the official coronation programme. Royal author Tom Bower is going to analyse this olive branch from Charles to Harry. Why does he keep giving olive branches to Harry, honestly, in the studio later this hour. The Metro uh, leads with the shocking story of violent criminal Damien Bendel, who was classed as low risk and released from prison, uh, and then went on. Although, actually, that, that's weird. That's not the... I think that's yesterday's paper, because if you come here, come to me, I actually have the Metro for tomorrow, uh, which is the SNP story, smash... Smash, crash, they say, SNP reset, rocked by the arrest of Treasurer. Uh, the First Minister kicks bottle plan into long grass. So, no, they are leading on what I believe uh, is the biggest story of the day. And the Daily Star, uh, their headline reads, Not today, thank you, chatbots. Uh, that's the head of Google admitting the dangers of artificial intelligence. Keep them up at night. And that was the story we actually covered on the show last night. Uh, my superstar panel back with me now, top Daily Mail columnist Amanda Platel, ex-England footballer and social commentator Matt Letizia, and the author and broadcaster Rebecca Reed. Now, the government's great migrant backtrack continues with a new admission that hotels will continue to house asylum seekers despite them costing taxpayers £6 million a day. Rishi Sunak promised to end the, quote, appalling use of expensive hotel accommodation in a boastful announcement in January. But Robert Jenrick, the immigration minister, has now admitted that the Home Office will need to, quote, use emergency accommodation hotels for a longer period than originally envisioned. Five sites are being eyed up by the government to create long-term accommodation including hotels and the likes of Worthing, Peterborough and North Wales. Sunak promised to stop the boats, but some 5,000 migrants have already crossed the channel so far this year, around 100,000 more expected by 2024. The PM spokesperson also gave today the most blatant hint yet that he's reneging on that pledge. He told reporters the PM said there was no quick fix in this area and indeed no silver bullet, adding we know that this will be an incremental approach. But... I'm sorry, Amanda Patel, an incremental approach is not going to win Sunak the next election. Why did he say he was going to stop the boats and he now seems to be doing everything possible to allow them to keep streaming in? OK, the reason that... Um, I'll answer your question, Dan. The reason that um, Rishi announced this in his five plans, yeah. uh, five-point plan, and put a huge priority on it was because he knows that that is the only mm -hmm. way he is likely to win the next election. The only way. And he has to have the guts to come out and say, we're going to get out of the European Court of Human Rights. We're going to start that process now. But he's not going to. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm just telling you what the reason he said it was because he knew it was the only way he's going to win the election. And now he's already backtracking. And he all it it is so plain to any advisor to him, unless you can deliver on this, you are toast, and the Tory party is toast, and you're going to hemorrhage at the next election. And you're saying but that as a former as top a former advisor, advisor to a Tory party you leader. Know. You know what the focus group's saying, and you don't even need focus groups if you have an instinct for what middle England, for what true Conservatives think. So, so if you were still advising the Tory leader today, if you were advising sooner, would you say, grow some balls, man, say we're going to leave the ECHR and actually do it, because that's the only thing that's going to I work? Would never refer to a man's genitalia like that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, crikey. I would just say, I would just be really straight with him. There's only one thing you've got to do and you've got to show yeah. that you are solving the crisis. He can't solve it in a year. But he's got 150,000 people living in hotels, as you say, between six and seven million pounds a week. And he has got to show that he's... A, a day. You're right. You're completely right. Um, he's got to show that he sees this. What he's showing now is that he's really, really weak. Matt Lissizier, yeah, this is one of the reasons that you have just lost faith in our political system and our politicians and our political parties, right? Because you say they never deliver. Uh, it, it's such an, an easy problem to sort out, to stop boats from coming. It's not difficult to do that. And if they, if they had a will to want to do that, they could do it very okay. easily. They could speed up the process um, uh, of getting the process when they come to this country for a start. Um, it wouldn't take a great deal of effort. 
Uh, and it would certainly take a, a great deal less money than they've spent on other nonsense things over the last few years. So, so, yes, so why, so why, why isn't he prepared to do that, given his number one pledge is to stop the boat? Uh, well, the it? obvious answer to that is he doesn't want to stop it, and this is all... Why would he not want to stop it? Oh, he's not showing that he wants to stop he it. Doesn't no, have the, so, so... He doesn't have the guts to do what it takes, which is to go and say, Europe... Get out of our lives. Because let's be honest oh, about that. What, what, that would upset the globalists, wouldn't it? That would, up, this, that, that would upset the people who Sunak needs to be in with. Why would it upset with. the globalists? Because we'd have to leave the ECHR. Why would that and, and, and we'd actually have to say that we want to set our own rules, we want to have our own borders, we're not going to listen to Wasn't that what Brexit was about? Well, it was, and, and Sunak voted for Brexit, so why the hell he's not doing it, I don't know. But mm. unfortunately, he is, he is a globalist, isn't he? If he's not... If he's, if he's has a problem and he says he's going to do something about it and then does nothing about it, then the only reason he's doing that is because he didn't want to do anything about it in the first place. I would... I don't know, but I sort of assume it's because it's more complicated to fix than, mm. than it necessarily seems to be because if he could fix this problem, it would be a vote winner and he likes <laughs> winning votes. So, to me, why it's do, if he could, why, he would. It, when you say it's more difficult to fix, surely... We're actually not just we not fixing it. We're actually facilitating them coming here. We're giving them we're giving them a little tow in. Mm. You know, come and come and stay with us. Mm. Fine, we'll, we'll get our boats in and we'll actually escort you in and and we'll sort you out. Strong They're not doing politi- anything to try to stop it. Need um, grand gestures. There's only a year out to the next election. Um, at this rate, there'll be about 130 Tory MPs <laughs> left. And unless he goes out and says, right, comes out and says, yeah. I am getting out of the European... But he has to do that rights. now. He has to do it now, Dan. He has to do it now because otherwise there's zero chance. I, it's my belief that it doesn't really matter who wins the next election. How can they're, you they're, say that? I'll tell you how I can say that <laughs> because it's two... Because the two main parties are two cheeks of the same backside. They are at the moment. They are, they are. and they've shown that to be the last three years. Well, let's, have let's, so let's, ha- let's all agree to have care then. No, thank you. We'll all be happy. No, thank you. Now, an obese Canadian influencer has launched a petition demanding airlines give overweight flyers as many free seats as they need to travel comfortably. So in her petition, which currently stands at just over 6,500 signatures, this is Jaylene Cheney, uh, a self-styled travel and lifestyle creator, and she writes... My partner and I have unfortunately experienced discrimination and discomfort while flying and therefore all plus size passengers should be provided with an extra free seat or even two or three seats depending on their size to accommodate their needs and ensure their comfort during the flight. Now here she is promoting the cause in a post on her social media. People ask me if I purchase two seats when flying. They say it's not fair to the person who has to sit next to me if I do. When I tell them I do, they say I'm selfish for taking a seat from another. The fact of the matter is that people can't stand to see fat people happy. So why should we care what they think? Cheney does admit that the price that we'd have to pay for tickets would go up if she were to get her away, uh, which is something that many non-overweight passengers uh, probably don't want because she wants them to foot the bill. Uh, Amanda Patel, being the humanitarian that you are, I presume <laughs> that you're behind Jalen Cheney's plan. Do you think this is a nice thing? Nice idea? Can I say that I am not a fattest? I respect anybody's right to be as fat as they want to be. Yeah. And if that's their lifestyle, if that they're... Well, shouldn't the airline just give them the two or three no, no, seats? you didn't then. let me finish my sentence, OK? <laughs> and I think if you've got an ass the size of two seats, you should pay for two seats. And I actually think that what we should be doing is instead of, you know, when you go in, on a short-haul flight and they weigh your luggage, I think they weigh, should weigh human beings. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't they? Matt? And they should be paying twice uh, I mean, as much. How much do you make? I mean, make that? You're a I'm, slim guy. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be paying extra. We for, are you normal know. sized people. Yeah, but what, 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 I, I what, what about the top rugby people. players? What the top so, rugby players who have massive BMI eyes, huge weight, you know? Lots of, be fair, lots of them do buy yeah. lots of them do buy two seats. I think if so for instance I travel with a small child now, I will buy two seats because otherwise it's me and a toddler trying yeah. to get on you and she needs a seat of her own. So I think realistically So you don't want to you don't want to give Jalen two seats? I think for free. 
I feel sad for Jalen, but I think she's put herself in a position where she's going to be horribly bullied, and I think it was probably the stupidest video anyone's ever, ever made. She's Why not, has she put herself in the firing line? She's not being yeah. bullied. She, like, my, I, I think she hasn't thought that through properly. She hasn't. And but the issue is, the world hates fat people. It's they one of the don't. Things, oh. they do, mm. We no, don't. Do you know anybody in this world who would like to be two stone fatter than they are? No, no, but that doesn't mean you no hate them. No one wants that. That does not mean you hate them. People are, but, but there's a simple thing here. People are mean I, I got this, this um, coming back on holiday from Easter with your favourite bloody panellist, Carol Malone. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's favourite. Uh, yeah, the everyone's people's favorite. princess, Carol. Uh, we're coming back from her place. I was with Andrew Pierce, And, um, and that there sounds was this, like a party. And there was this woman who got <laughs> on the plane, on the, on the train, and we were in first class, only 15 quid each to get on first yeah. class. She had to pull up the aisle between the seats to fit her humongous bottom on it. Mm. And then this young Vietnamese family came on, I found out because I chatted to mm. them, and they had to squeeze into two seats, the three of them, while this person, you know... So what you're saying, she should have to pay extra, that's what She should have to pay extra. But then I say, the, the argument made on TikTok... She should have to pay this isn't, quadruple. This what is, isn't what is the argument, defence? But what the defence on TikTok is, would you really, if your friend was a size 38, and they couldn't go home to see their family for Christmas because they couldn't afford two plane seats. Mm. Would you really say that they shouldn't yeah. deserve to yeah, go on a diet? Yeah, go on a diet, that's what I'd say. But you can't get from a yeah. 38 oh, she's to crowd a 14. Fund. She's, she's, going, crowd fund she's going on a holiday okay. to stuff her face okay. with more food. I've, I've, to make her oh, more The Platel has spoken. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matt Letizia, <laughs> Rebecca Reed. Uh, do stand by because coming up, in a chilling repeat of the phone notification sent out during COVID, remember them? The government's now trialing a disturbing emergency alert this Sunday. But just how concerned should we be about this Orwellian move? My superstar panel will return to debate that soon. But next, as the SNP treasurer Colin Beatty is arrested and questioned by police over the party's finances, is the Scottish separatist cause on the brink of collapse? I'm going to investigate with some of the sharpest minds north of the board, the Albert Party's Christopher McAllany, the Scottish Daily Mail's Michael Blackley and the former Tory MP Ross Thompson. They're all live straight after the break. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock. It's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. 
New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Join us every Saturday from 8 p.m. as we debate the week's stories. Right, folks, that was a spicy one, wasn't it? With us four, plus a special guest. Sometimes she has to stick her foot in it. Sometimes she has to say things as they are. Sometimes I think we should keep the refugees and send the pensioners to Rwanda. <laughs> then we'd be in a much better state. Well, yeah. 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 The Saturday Five. Saturday nights from 8. Only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Welcome back. Tom Bauer on the way. But first, Operation Branch Form, the investigation into the SNP's finances, took another dramatic turn as the party's treasurer, Colin Beatty, was arrested this morning. The 71-year-old has been the SNP's national treasurer between 2004 and 2020 and then again from 2021. Tonight, Police Scotland said Beatty had been arrested without charge but pending further investigation. It follows the leaked video of Sturgeon released by the Scottish Mail at the weekend where she sternly denied that there were any financial instabilities uh, to the party's National Executive Committee. Watch. Be very careful, uh, all of us, about suggestions that there are problems with the party's finances because we depend on donors to donate. If there are leaks, as with everything else, it, that gets more difficult to do. So everybody has to be very clear a, a, about that. Now, in what is perhaps the worst political hospital pass ever, Humza Useless has spent the opening weeks of his premiership trying to put the fires out across the SNP. Uh, last night, the Daily Telegraph reported that Sturgeon's arch loyalists, of which Youssef is one, are beginning to turn against her. So with the SNP suffering this devastating fall from graces, Scottish separatism now dead in the water, and what on earth is going to happen to scheming Sturgeon. Well, look, I'm joined now by General Secretary of the Alba Party, Christopher McKennelly. That is, of course, Alex Salmon's party. He's live from Westminster, alongside the former Tory MP for Aberdeen South, Ross Thompson, and the Scottish Daily Mail's political editor, Michael Blackley. Michael, look, I want to start with you because you're one of the journalists who has been keeping across this story, but a lot of the MSM in Scotland just pretended it wasn't happening. Uh, what are you hearing about Sturgeon? Do you think there's a chance that she is actually going to resign now rather than face suspension from the SNP? Well, it's the question on everybody's lips at the moment because there's been so much happening on this issue in recent days and the arrest today of the SNP's treasurer, Colin Beatty, really raised more questions about, you know, is Nicola Sturgeon going to face questions on this issue? There were three individuals that signed off the SNP's accounts. Two of these three individuals have faced uh, arrest and questioning under caution by police. Nicola Sturgeon is the only one that hasn't so far. So I think the, the big issue is, is she going to face that, that questioning from police? And if she does, uh, I, I think there will be some calls for her to step aside while that investigation happens. Uh, whether she's going to do that or not, I'm not sure. Um, she's not showed up at Scottish Parliament today on the first day back after the Easter recess, and she doesn't intend to show up for the, the rest of the week either. So I think that adds fuel really to the, the concerns that some are raising that, you know, if she doesn't even want to show up to Parliament to face scrutiny on these issues, then what's the point in her continuing? Wow, great reporting. So scheming Sturgeon effectively in hiding. Christopher McKenley, from, from your point of view, uh, is it the SNP? That's finished, or is it the separatism cause that's finished? Well, it's certainly not the cause of Scottish independence. You know, I think you need to, you know, disassociate the pantomime that's, you know, been unplayed before we rise here. Of course, this is an important matter, and it's the reason that the SNP are now sitting at some of the lowest poll ratings in, you know, two or three decades. But the cause of Scottish independence today in Scotland, support for independence is higher 
today in 2023 than it was in 2014. So this isn't going to damage the cause for independence, but it might actually provide an opportunity. For a long time, many people have been put off that they didn't feel they could vote for independence because it was a vote for one political party. Now I think it's clear that the cause of Scottish independence is much bigger than any individual, whether it's Nicola Sturgeon, it's much bigger than any political party, whether it's the SNP. And I think going forward, what we'll see is an alliance in Scotland for independence coming together, and that's certainly something that the Westminster government will not be able to face down. Ross Thompson, isn't Sturgeon uh, the biggest hypocrite in British politics? Because I remember day after day after day she would come out and slam Boris Johnson over parties going on at number 10 Downing Street that he had no idea about. You know, parties which, let's be honest, resulted in a fixed penalty notice. Who cares? Surely now uh, she has to go based on what she previously called on Boris to do. Absolutely, Dan. She has no moral authority whatsoever. We all know how quick she was to stand in front of a television camera, a, a COVID briefing podium, wherever it was, to call for the head, the resignation, the whip to be, be withdrawn from any Conservative MP that was making the headlines at that time. Uh, she always used to say that she would show and demonstrate leadership, and if she's to be true to her word, then she should do the same thing in this case. She is was the leader of a party. As Michael said, she has her name on the accounts that were submitted from that party to the Electoral Commission with her husband and Colin Beatty. Two of those have already been questioned and arrested. It's a matter of time before I'm sure the same thing happens to Nicola Sturgeon. If she believes in her own moral hiring, she would also do the right thing, uh, resign her party membership at this time. But I think that's probably very unlikely. Ross, do you think the separatism cause is dead and buried now? I think that the independence cause is at the bottom of the ocean alongside the uh, heart of the ocean that the old lady rose through at the end of the movie. I think it is sunk good and proper. And I think that's why you saw Christopher in this interview trying to say to people watching your programme, please don't look at the pantomime and the crisis within the SNP because people across Scotland know that the SNP has been the main party advocating for independence in Scotland. Alex right. Salmon had been its leader in 2014. It was a united yeah. party. At that point, the SNP seemed competent in government. But I'm Christopher, sure Christopher agree with that. But, right but now, they've got no chance. But Christopher, your party your is led party by Alex Salmond is... today. And he went on the BBC last night saying that he had actually warned Sturgeon uh, that this was coming. So perhaps... I mean, even though, you know, I'm very opposed to separatism, perhaps Alex Salmon does have the moral authority to say, hang on a moment, you've got to ditch the SNP and come over to Alba. Well, I think actually what he was saying was that in 2014 they warned Nicola Sturgeon and Peter Morell that it wasn't a good idea for an organisation to have a leader uh, of a party and that their husband was the chief executive. Yes, and, you know, exactly. I think he's been proven right on that. But, but you're right to say, you know, going forward, you know, the SNP have failed the Scottish independence movement and they're now the, the, the main force that's holding back Scottish independence. So the job of Alaba now is to show people in Scotland that we can be that home for the Scottish independence movement going forward. But, you know, mm. as important as this is to, you know, many people from the political bubble. The reality is in Scotland, people are most concerned now that we're living an energy rich nation but people are having to wear their coats in their house. You know, the, the case for Scottish independence has never been stronger. It's higher now than it was in 2014. It doesn't well, matter if, you know, Tories can use Titanic references all they want yeah. but, you know, West, <laughs> you know, I think Westminster's been rearranging the deck okay. chairs here for, for long enough and I think people okay. in Scotland are, are all too sick of okay. that. Appreciate that. Look, Michael Blackley, just want a uh, final word with you. Uh, you're obviously political editor of the Scottish Daily Mail. What are you hearing about where this police investigation goes? Uh, are you expecting there to be further arrests? Well, we can't know for certain if there's going to be further arrests, but certainly we, we've seen a couple of people being questioned uh, being arrested, questioned under caution, and then released pending further investigation. And I think that's an important point on it. The, the police always say pending further investigation. So, mm. so we, this we don't know up. exactly where they're going to go with the yeah. investigation. But it sounds but like it's no not doubt. over yet. No, indeed. Yeah. Fascinating yeah, stuff. No doubt there's a lot more to rumble on. OK, thank you to all three of you. Very quick legal note here. The allegations surrounding the SNP's finances denied by all of the parties involved. The investigation is ongoing. No charges have been brought. So thank you to 
Christopher McKenley uh, from the Alba Party, Ross Thompson representing the Scottish Tories and the Scottish Daily Mail's political editor, Michael Blackley. Now coming up in Uncancelled, King Charles has raised eyebrows by including a portrait with Harry and Meghan in the Coronation Souvenir programme, but should he have shown some tough love to the pair after their awful behaviour? Tom Bauer joins me live in the studio with Forensic Royal Analysis shortly. But next, as a creepy emergency test alert will be sent to all mobile and tablet devices on Sunday afternoon, is this latest nanny state intervention good for public, public safety or just mission creep to some sort of Orwellian nightmare? My superstar panel, they're back on this straight after the break. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it. Like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. Crop failures, famine, war, <laughs> suffering on a scale completely <laughs> unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said of the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. So let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our media buzz and more front pages have just been delivered. The I newspaper reports that NHS targets will return under a Labour government with Starmer planning to introduce Blair-esque objectives to improve waiting times and patient care. Uh, this is going to be a big push by Labour tomorrow. We'll be hearing much more about it then. The Sun leads on calls from MPs for tougher sentences to be handed to eco-terrorists. The paper's headline reads, Tough Justice, after the entitled job who invaded the World Snooker Championships yesterday was unmasked as the son of a mega-rich investor. But they won't get tough justice, will they? Because uh, the justice system is soft on these absolute eco-terrorist idiots. And the Daily Mail leads with MPs' calls for police and judges to end the growing wave of chaotic eco-protests. That's in the wake of that disruption to the snooker championships and also the Grand National on the weekend.
My superstar panel will return now. Top Daily Mail columnist Amanda Platel, ex-England footballer and social commentator Matt Letizier, and the author and broadcaster Rebecca Reed. Now, in a terrifying government scheme to meddle in our lives, a nationwide test alert will be sent to your mobile or tablet device at 3 p.m. on Sunday and with no prior public consultation. The government claims that the alarms will be used in emergencies to warn us if our lives are in danger. But is it just scaremongering to keep us in a continuous, continuous sort of state of panic, really? Uh, the nanny state that was nurtured over COVID seems to be coming back to haunt us. And once they're in our phones, let me tell you, you'll never get them out. This is what the creepy alarm is going to look like. And as the Daily Mail asked today, which genius thought it was a good idea to terrify the whole country at 3 p.m. on Sunday? I mean, Matt Letizia, we... We sort of knew, didn't we? We knew. And this is one of the reasons why we fought so hard against the government over COVID, because once they see that the public are accepting of these sort of Orwellian controls in our lives, they go for it. And they're going for it. They certainly are going for it. And I think we, we all realised that this was going to be uh, the next step. Um, they will keep going uh, until enough of us push back against it. Um, and, and I think it's criminal that this government is infantilizing its population to the mm. extent that they are and quite frankly i'm sick of them and do yourself a favor go to your notifications on your phone scroll down to the bottom turn mm. off notifications you won't get those stupid alerts yeah because actually what matt says is really true amanda this is creeping into every part of our life now all you have to do is be on a train and, and you hear alerts to young mothers saying, uh, keep hold of, of your pram. You know, uh, the other day at the station next to our studio at Paddington Station, uh, it said, please don't run up the stairs. That was literally painted on every <laughs> single stair. Why aren't you allowed and, to run up the stairs? Well, exactly. And also, the it's just like... The pram one is also passive aggressive because they yeah. just, when they see you with the pram and they judge that I look like the kind of person who'd leave my pram, which I would, <laughs> and, they, and they play yeah. it when I go and sit down. Yeah. I'm like, she's fine. Yeah. But the you point is, the point is... As a country, we used to be so opposed to the nanny state. That's where we were different to countries like Australia. What's happened yeah, to but, us? But what, what happened to us, Dan, was COVID. Yeah. And, and during the period of COVID, we, um, we subjugated ourselves to the mm -hmm. state's control. You know, we had people Not paying... everyone did. No, no, no. You were bloody heroic and you, <laughs> and you damn well paid for it as a result for speaking up. Yeah. But, you know, we basically had the state paying for people not to work. So we've now got a culture of people who don't want to work mm -hmm. and still think the state should... Or if they do them. work, they want to stay at home. They want to stay at home and work half the time they would normally do. You know, the whole thing was was recalibrated during COVID and it's time we took it back. And, and there's no way... I mean, there is a little guide in which, Matt, I have to say, you just perfectly said, this is the guide on how you turn that mm. thing off. We do not have to be slaves to the government. And I say, say, I think that George Orwell would have had a hard time writing a terrifying novel about something that you could get rid of by turning your phone off. Yeah, but lots of people don't know how to do off. that. People, people now turn their phones off. You just press the big off button down until it turns off. <laughs> no, it it's not doesn't exactly work like that. It's like much more complicated. For thought they should not have access into our No, they should we, be able to get into our phones anyway. And, and also, phones. Rebecca, Dave, but, but, but Rebecca, do you know they also can the use our phones to track our movements? Yeah, then don't have a phone if you don't like it. Don't have oh, come Alexa. on. Don't have, no, I should I be able to have a phone without the government tracking my movements. I don't have my location services switched on because it drains my battery and I need my battery. They can track you anyway. Not without your location services on. They literally can't. Yeah, I, don't I don't have any of those things. Beatles if you don't have Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an Alexa. I don't, I don't have any have of those things. Also, if they want my data, have it. It's so boring. It's just me messaging people being like, are you angry with me? Like, I, I have yeah. my data. It's not I know, important. but to me, this is mission creep. That's what this is, is really about. It is completely that. Yeah. But also, wouldn't it be useful if there's a terror attack? Yeah, but that's not what they're going to use it for, is it? And, and uh, if, there's a, if they've got a warning of a terrorist attack, you know, it's going to happen in one place, like it did with the tube yeah. or with the buses. What but are I they think all this is testing whether they, can, whether they can do it by location. What, to warn this, us all to is... leave our houses yeah. or what? Well, though, if is... it is a nuclear thing, I would prefer not this to know. Is... I would like to go out in the first strike and not be warned. It's, it's another agree. test of compliance is what yeah. it is. They that want is... to see how many people will comply. Indeed. Um, that and, is exactly and if, right. if enough of them do, 
they'll keep going yeah. and they'll keep going. This is what the furlough scheme is all about, to get you used to universal basic yeah. income. I, and now we what love we're seeing universal in basic income. That's a great idea. No, we don't, but that's a separate debate. Yeah. Now, look, league leaders Arsenal threw away a two-goal lead versus West Ham on Sunday, but it's their despicable performance off the pitch that has shocked fans. A young Arsenal supporter had the unforgettable experience of being team mascot for the match, with the club posting a video online of her meeting the players and the caption, making memories. But in the two-minute-long clip, not one of the pampered and privileged football pros spoke to the girl, most not even having the decency to take out their headphones. Now, the girl's dad did come to the players' defence, saying there was only a small window to meet them and she enjoyed it very much. But I'd suggest that instead of Arsenal and the Premier League demanding woke gestures like taking the knee, perhaps a basic lesson in manners would be more constructive. Now, coming up, uh, oh, thank you, by the way, Rebecca Reed, <laughs> Matt Letizio, <laughs> Amanda Michelle, I cannot forget about you. I cannot forget about you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it is. It is. Where are your manners? Okay, that's why I didn't open this up to you. Now, coming up, Tory MP Andrew Bridgen has been one of a few lonely voices in Parliament sticking up for civil liberties amid the COVID circus, and he's not stopping yet. The freedom fighter now has, has his sights set on fighting new pandemic treaties uh, by the World Health Organization, which he fears are authoritarian and corrupt. He's up for a gong and my greatest Britain union jacket. So I, I have a feeling I know who's going to nominate him. But next in Uncancelled, has King Charles offered yet another olive branch to the Duke and Duchess of Delusion by including his photo with them in the official coronation souvenir programme? Or should he have adopted Prince William's stone-cold silent treatment? Plus, is Meghan's jealousy of Kate and her unwillingness to play second fiddle the real reason behind her coronation snub? The best royal author of the business, Tom Bauer, He's back and live in the studio in just two minutes time with his unmissable insight and analysis. So don't go anywhere. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's already in waiting, they're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. Please. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11 p.m. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers <laughs> tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And in his latest olive branch, the troublesome couple, King Charles, has included a photo with Harry and Meghan in the official coronation souvenir programme. The rare family snap was taken months after the Sussex's wedding in 2018 as part of the King's 70th birthday celebrations. The Prince of Wales, however, he's in no mood for reconciliation and continues to give short shrift to the Duke of Delusion. As I outlined in my new Mail Online column, William's silent treatment is not harsh, it is morally and strategically the best thing to defeat Harry and Meghan's ludicrous takedown 
of the British monarchy. Well, I'm joined now back in the studio. Uh, we've missed him, haven't we? Uh, royal expert, Meghan Markle's biographer and uh, King Charles's biographer too, Tom Bower. So, Tom, uh, do you agree with me that actually it's William who's getting the strategy right here rather than King Charles? Well, William is, but, I mean, the, the, re the real person in charge, of course, is the king. Yeah. And I feel the king is losing sight of the plot. Uh, he is losing sight that the coronation is all about the glory of the monarchy and of Britain. And he's reducing it to the squabbles in his family. But worse than that, not just, you know, Meghan and Harry and Prince Andrew as well and should Fergie be invited, but I think the promotion of Camilla is also distracting mm. from the importance of the coronation of the king. And she doesn't even particularly want it, does she? And she doesn't. And really what you see with this constant promotion of Camilla and the photographs of the two is that the coronation seems to be about the marriage, mm. not about the, 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 the crowning of the king. And somehow in all this, it's what I always feared about Charles. He's lost sight of what actually this ceremony and what his reign is meant to embrace. He's not establishing himself as the key to a future era mm. He is now all just worried about whether people love Camilla and what will they think yeah, yeah. about Harry and the olive branch. I mean, this is just nonsense. Yeah. I, I actually totally agree about the Camilla point. Camilla doesn't care. You know, she wasn't fussy about this, but Charles is so desperate for their marriage to finally be properly accepted. But when it comes to this Harry and Meghan photo, I have to be honest, I'm quite offended by it. Like, Meghan doesn't deserve to be in the official brochure for the coronation. Look at everything she said since the death of the late Queen. And my worry is that he keeps rewarding bad behaviour by the Sussexes. So they think, oh, if we keep on behaving badly, that's what gets us noticed. That's what gets us all of these things. Well, I think he is, on the one hand, he's being cowardly. And then he is constantly dithering. And because he just doesn't want to be disliked. And he doesn't realise that the only way actually to impose a reign as opposed to having a, an argument or whatever mm -hmm. he normally did as Prince of Wales is you've got to be firm. And he's not firm. And that's why the coronation is still undecided. Key aspects, should there be this bishop, mm -hmm. should this priest be there or not, or what should they say? He is actually performing exactly as I feared, self-indulgent, un, mm -hmm. uh, unable to fix his uh, focus mm -hmm on what is necessary. And, and at promotion. the same time, we've also heard, you know, he's opening the doors to reparations. For reparations and slavery. all the rest of it. Yeah. And he should, have, of course, have banned Harry completely from yes. the coronation. That would have shown a, a total purpose. And he should say quite clearly mm. that Prince Andrew has no role either. But instead, he's just pandering to his own insecurities. Can we talk a little bit about exactly why Meghan has decided not to come? Uh, while Harry is. Now, some experts have claimed that Meghan didn't want to play second fiddle to Kate at the coronation. Uh, my belief is that she simply couldn't countenance the prospect of being booed by the British public. What, what are you hearing about why well, she didn't come? Well, I think you've got to remember, in all our conversations over the last weeks and months, we never, I never thought that they would come. Mm. And I was in a complete minority. What I hadn't actually anticipated is that he'd come alone for 24 hours because that seemed to me inconceivable. So clearly, he suddenly realised that if he doesn't come, he puts himself so completely in isolation, in the freezer, that he had to show, make an appearance. Her presence, I thought, was never likely because she doesn't want to be in Britain. She doesn't want to be part of the royal family. She's a Californian. She doesn't want to curtsy to the Queen. She doesn't want to curtsy mm. to Kate or Sophie. I think mean, that was very important. And then, of course, they did not guarantee her a spotlight in the front row. And she didn't want to play second fiddle again, gazing out of a window. So I think altogether, for her, it was unless she was going to be prominent, she wasn't going to take the part. She's milked the royal family for everything they can give her. She's got global recognition, which she didn't have before. I'm going to tell you something else, though, Dan. I thought the poll last weekend was pretty indicative that a large number of young people think they should be there. They like Meghan. The diverse community like Meghan. And I think that the palace quite clearly decided they didn't want Meghan there and they were putting uh, conditions on her presence which they hoped she would refuse. And in that way, they've kept her out. Harry is there after all. He's fifth in line in succession. 
So to some extent, he should be there, and he doesn't want to be totally excluded. But they'll freeze him out, hopefully. Uh, but Meghan is such a poisonous, vile person mm. for Britain. The one thing she realizes is that the crowds, who are clearly monarchists on the streets, wouldn't give her the welcome that she thinks she deserves. Yeah, because she's haunted by the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Uh, she was shunned by the family at that event at St Paul's Cathedral. They didn't want anything to do with her. Even members of the family that had formerly been quite welcoming, like uh, Zara and Mike Tyndall. They wanted nothing to do with the two of them. Uh, there was booze on the way up, and then the booze got louder yeah. when they walked down the stairs. Yeah. And I think Meghan really couldn't handle the prospect of being booed. And I, th I think she would have been booed. I think the booze would have been loud. And I think Harry used the court case against Associated Newspapers as a little test case because no crowds turned up on the second or the third day to boo him on his own. I I think there's all that. But what is terrible is that we're discussing why is Meghan not here? Mm. And that is Charles's fault completely. Mm. And she's wormed her way yeah. into his consciousness. And Meghan should, should be... should have just been no invite, right? Exactly. But that's why I don't think they should be in the coronation brochure. Absolutely. Either. They're not part of the royal exactly. family. Exactly. And he, they don't want to be. Exactly. They don't want to be part of... Them. And he's just foolish, the king. Yeah. And I fear that his reign is going to suffer from that indecision mm. and that desperate plea to be liked. OK, so look... Preparations well underway now for the coronation. I think we're actually going to look at some uh, footage of rehearsals which were taking place last night along uh, the procession route. But, Tom, this is quite remarkable. Only three weeks to go. Uh, there doesn't seem to be the same sense of excitement building that there was ahead of the Diamond Jubilee. That's right, the Platinum Jubilee yeah. last year. No, I think that's a great tragedy. I think that's the portent of something which is going to be rather unfortunate because people are not excited, because they don't want to know about his marriage to Camilla. They don't want to know about Meghan. They want to know about the glory of the monarchy. And that is exactly what he's undermining, because he can't decide whether it should be a fully traditional uh, coronation, whether there should be lots of pageantry and all the rest of it. He's restricted the length of the procession. He just is insecure about how he should demonstrate his authority. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the reason why there's this lack of enthusiasm. And I blame his advisers and him for that. OK. Tom Bauer, tough words. Very good to have you back, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, but it's time now to reveal today's greatest Britain and Union Jackass. My superstar panel return, Amanda Platel. Who are you nominating as your GB tonight? Well, Dan, I'm going to do Kemi Badnock because she's the one, the minister, who's forcing through the equalities bill that um, no person with a penis will be allowed into safe spaces for women. Full stop. Good on her. Yep, good choice, I think. Uh, Matt Letizia, who's your nominee? Uh, I've gone for Andrew Bridgen for being uh, one of the few MPs to speak out uh, about the pandemic. And yesterday he spoke out against the pandemic treaties. Uh, he's raised objections to signing up to treaties that would empower the WHO's Director General, Dr Tedros, who himself was a member of a terrorist organisation back in the 80s, but the media don't seem to mention that very much, uh, stop him imposing sweeping legally binding directives on member states that are going to override our UK sovereignty. Yeah, very important, this whole World Health You're Organization uh, treaty. Uh, Rebecca Reid, your nominee. I've gone for the Just Stop Oil protesters, partially because... As your greatest Britain? Yeah, now partially because I know it'll make you cross. And partially... <laughs> why, why do you want to make me cross just before yeah. 11 o'clock at night? Um, partially because I think it's, it was a, sort of almost an interesting piece of performance art. And I really, while I'm not what? really sure how it... Rebecca, about that... do you not understand? That was a professional snooker competition. Yeah, because... Uh, this means something to these people. It means something to the people in the audience. This is when I, unfortunately, Rebecca Reed, just start to think that you're an anarchist. A little bit, sometimes. I think it was an interesting piece of performance art, and I think that it's nice. It's not performance it's art. Nice it's ruining art. people's lives. It's, it's ruining, ruining people's it's businesses. Ruining it's ruining people's lives. experiences. It's a game. It's a game you play a bit drunk in the pub. It's not ruining anyone's lives. It's better than when they glue themselves to things. Who the hell are you to say that it's not a proper game? But it's, it, come on, it's not ruined. Whose life was ruined by that experience? I, I respect that they care so much and they're standing up for what they believe in. Oh, they're absolute idiots. Uh, well, sorry, I'm going to go with uh, Amanda Patel. What? Amy. I'm shocked. I'm shocked there. Uh, Union Jackass time now. Amanda, who are you going for? And my gift to you, Dan, the first coronation gift. Oh. oh. It is a mug 
It cost me two quid, and oh, that's it. about all I think you the coronation's worth, OK? They look like a couple of gnomes or a couple of hobbits. So anyway, who's your, I'm I confused. Am not, who's your actual Union Jack hat? My, it is Prince Charles, because he's... So, oh, King Charles! King, King Charles, Charles, because he's so <laughs> damn woke that he's produced a vegetarian quiche, which yeah. is bloody French With dish. broad beans and With no beans, ham. But, 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 Dan, it gets worse. Hear me out. OK, uh, the quiche originally came from Germany. Did you know that? Like it, the royal family? It was, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the thing is, it came from a place called Lothingerungalung, and okay. then the French Lothling? took it over and renamed it Lorraine, okay. and then they called the quiche that the Germans invented quiche Lorraine. So I'm all following doing you. is sucking up to I'm the I'm following Europeans. you. Matt Letizia, <laughs> your nominee. Curse you. Uh, my nomination uh, is the Arsenal players uh, for how they treated oh, that young yes. girl. She was in awe of them and they didn't even say hi. Yeah. Instead, they just walked past with their headphones in and I think a, a little bit of humility is in order here. And uh, totally sometimes uh, you, you need to understand that these people uh, worship the ground you walk on and to give them a couple of seconds in your time. No, couldn't agree absolutely. more on that. Rebecca Reid, your nominee? I mean, I can't compete with the quiche rant, but um, <laughs> Rishi Sunak, uh, because the Parliament watchdogs opened an investigation into uh, his links to a childcare firm, which his wife is an investor. Just keep it clean, okay. guys. Well, look, I'm going to go with the Arsenal players. Matt Letizia, Amanda Patel, Rebecca Reid, thank you so much. Oh, this made me so mad. Uh, not as mad as Rebecca Reid choosing Just Stop World to be the greatest Britain, though. I'm back tomorrow at 9pm. Headliners is next. Good night. <laughs> Sorry. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. 